Word of Life, October 2022. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. The letter from which this Word of Life is taken is sometimes considered as St. Paul's spiritual testament. Imprisoned in Rome and awaiting sentence, the Apostle writes to Timothy, who is a young disciple and his co-worker in charge of the complex community of Ephesus. The writing contains recommendations and advice addressed to Timothy in particular, but applicable to every member of the Christian community, both yesterday and today. Paul is in chains in prison because he has preached the gospel, and he wants to encourage the disciple to face trials and be a safe guide for the community, even though Timothy is afraid of persecution and hesitant because of the difficulties involved in his ministry. It doesn't come naturally to Paul and Timothy to suffer because of the gospel, but such witness is possible because it is based on the power of God. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Paul wants to bear witness to the gospel. It seems clear that it is not talent, ability, or personal limitations that ensure or hinder the ministry of the word, but it is the gifts of the spirit, fortitude, charity, and prudence that guarantee the power of witness. When charity lies between fortitude and prudence, it facilitates discernment and, together with prudence, is manifested in our being wise and ready when faced with any situation. Timothy, like disciples from all ages, can proclaim the gospel with fortitude, charity, and prudence, even to the point of suffering for its sake. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. We too may have felt tempted to become discouraged in living and bearing witness to the Word of God, and we may have been unsure how to deal with certain situations. Kiara Lubick helps us understand where to draw strength during such times. We must appeal to the presence of Jesus within us. The best attitude is not being passively resigned to the situation and feeling blocked by it, but going outside of ourselves and taking up what is required by God's will. It means facing the challenge of fulfilling the duties to which our vocation calls us and relying on the grace of Jesus within us. So, it is important to look and act outside of ourselves. Jesus himself will develop in us the virtues that we need to bear witness to, to him in carrying out the task that has been entrusted to us. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Fortitude, charity, and prudence are three virtues of the Spirit that are obtained through prayer and the exercise of faith. Father Justin Nari from the Central African Republic, his confreres and about 1,000 Muslims were taking refuge in a church as they tried to escape from war reprisals. They received death threats, and on several occasions, the militia leaders who were besieging them asked Father Justin to surrender. However, he always tried to dialogue with them in the hope of avoiding a massacre. One day, they showed up with 40 liters of gasoline and threatened to burn everyone alive if he did not hand the Muslims over to them. With my confreres, 
I celebrated Mass for the last time, says Father Justin. And there I remembered Kara Lubick. I asked myself what she would have done in my place. She would have stayed and given her life. And that's what we decided to do. After Mass, there was an unexpected telephone call. The African Union Army was passing through the region and was in a nearby town. Father Justin ran to meet them, and together they returned to the parish. There were 13 minutes to go before the ultimatum expired. 13 minutes that saved the lives of all those people and avoided bloodshed. By Letizia Magri